In this example, we're going to show you how you can take a model and create a recess for it to sit inside of. Well, we're going to walk you through the process of how to create the faux hand-carved scalloped edge using the sculpting tools. So let's just go to File, Close. So let's go and create a new file. Working with a single-sided job, we're going to give that a width of 10 inches, height of 8 inches, going to give that a material thickness, three quarters of an inch, Z0 position on the material surface, XY datum position, let's set that to the lower left hand corner and then we could go ahead and press OK. So the first thing we want to do is look at importing our horse head. So go to the modeling tab and we're going to use this icon here to import a component or a 3D model. From the Creating a Card Recess Project folder, we're going to open the horse head model and you can see that's been positioned there. So let's just align that to the centre of our job. So with that selected, we'll go over to Align Selected Objects and Align to Material both vertically and horizontally. There we go, if we just go ahead and press Close there. So let's just size up the horse. So with that selected, let's go over to Set Selected Object Size. Okay, I'm just going to scale the width of this so it's 7 inches wide. Keep link XY checked so it scales in proportion. We're also going to auto scale the Z so that the Z also scales up in proportion with the width and the height. So let's just go ahead and press apply there. And then we could just close that down. So having sized that, you can still see that we have quite a bit of space surrounding the horse for vectors that will look at creating an offsetting to create the faux carved recess. So let's just go ahead and tile our windows vertically. Okay, with that model selected, let's just go and check the actual Z height of that. So I'll go over to the properties form. So let's change the height of this so it's actually 3 eighths of an inch. And the total height here is important as we plan to put this model in a recess shape that will be 0.4 inches deep. So we've got to make sure that the component that sat in the recess is slightly smaller than the recess itself. Okay, so happy with that. Let's just close that down. Now when we create parts that are going to be recessed or dished below the modeling plane, and it's important that we have a component that represents that plane for the dish or recess shape to merge with. And there's two reasons for this. One, it helps us to visualize the part. Two, it helps us to prevent some possible issues that we may have when it comes to machining, where it allows the software to better define the exact point where the recess shape meets the surface of the material, which will ultimately result in a cleaner toolpath with a smooth machine surface. So the most important thing is to remember to create this zero plane. So to create a zero plane, we come into the model and tools, we use this icon here, add a plane component that has zero height. And you'll see that a component has been added to our component tree, the zero plane there. If we come over to our 3D view, we can actually see this component here completely covering our part and if I run my mouse over this plane you'll see at the bottom highlighted there that we just have a height of zero. Okay, in the 2D view we don't actually see the grayscale of the component and that's because the software automatically creates a layer for the zero plane that is switched off by default and moved up to the top of our layers list. So you'll see that there, We've got the zero plane layer at the top here switched off. If I switch that on we can see that grayscale but by default it's switched off and moved to the top and that's just really to prevent it from obscuring any component grayscales and vectors that we may already have visible here in the 2D view. So the next step in this process is we're going to look at creating a vector boundary of our horse which will then ultimately offset outwards and the offset vector will be the vector that we use to actually create the recess shape. So let's select our horse head, we're going to come over to the modeling tools and we're going to use this icon here to create a vector boundary around the selected components. So if I just click in the white space there you'll see it's created that vector there that fits the edge of our model. Now with that vector let's go into the drawing tab and we're going to use the offset option. 
So we're going to look at offsetting this vector outwards, okay? So we want to ensure that there's space around the model. And so the offset value will vary depending on the size of your part and the units that you're working with. But generally, go with 25% more than the depth of the recess you plan to model. Now I plan to create the recess with a depth of 0.4. And so we're going to look at offsetting this outwards by half an inch. We use the option here to delete original and then we could just go ahead and offset that. We could close that down. And so using that vector, let's go into the model and tab and we're going to create a shape. So we're going to create this recess shape. So we're going to go with a round profile. Okay, so the angle of this, I'm going to go 75 degrees. We're going to limit the height of this and we're going to limit that to 0.4 as I mentioned earlier. I'm going to set the combined mode of this to subtract to create the actual recess shape and then we're going to name this component and we'll just simply call that recess and we could go ahead and press apply. Now judging by the slight change in the shading here we can see that everything is set well below the zero plane which means that nothing is actually sticking out above that plane and that's because our horse is set to 3 eighths of an inch and the recess is set to 0.4. Now if you found that areas of the models that you're using to sit within the recess were the same colour as the actual material, it means that those areas are actually sticking above the plane and you'd need to adjust the angle of the recess or reduce the height of the model sat in the recess to ensure that the model sits well within this recess shape and is below this zero plane. Now if we just close that down and if you actually had your model in plane switched off, so if we just undraw the model in plane for the time being, uh, another way that you could also check that the model doesn't come over this zero plane is by using the scale Z height of model option uh, where maximum Z should be at zero. So if you had a value higher than that, then that's the software telling you the model is actually higher and you'd need to adjust the heights as we mentioned earlier, so either adjust the angle of the recess shape or decrease the actual height of the model sat in the recess itself. So we could OK that, but if you use the view option and you draw that model in plane, this is a very clear indication here that we can see everything is sat below there. So now what we want to do is we just want to check that there's no overlap between the edge of our horse and the edge of this recess shape that we've just created. So let's just maximise the 3D view. I'm just going to undraw the horse head model. Okay, and if we just switch that back on, so all I'm doing here is I'm just checking that our horse's head doesn't overlap into the edge of the recess that we've got here. And so by doing this, I can clearly see that there is no overlap here. Now if you found that your recess was coming in a little bit too much, then you'd have to look at remodeling that either with a higher angle or by offsetting your vector out a little bit more. Okay, so now that I'm happy that my horse sits well below the zero plane and my recess edge doesn't overlap the horse, we can look at smoothing and sculpting in the faux carved recess edge. Now where our recess shape meets the zero plane, we've got quite a sharp edge. To better demonstrate this, I'm just going to temporarily undraw our modeling plane, okay, so we can see that sharp edge there. And we want to just look at smoothing the edge of our part in preparation for sculpting. So we're going to take that recess shape, shift and select the zero plane, and then we're going to apply a smooth filter. Okay, software is going to warn me that we need to bake that before we edit that. I'm happy to do that, so we'll press OK. And now we're manipulating the two components as one. Okay, so by default, the smooth filter will do that at default of 50%. Okay, I'm just going to maximize that so you can see we've got a much smoother transition between the recess and our zero plane. So we're going to bake that. And then I'm going to apply another maximum smooth over. Okay, then we'll just bake that. And then we could just simply close out there. 
And we're going to take that component, just going to right click, we're going to rename that, we're just going to call this one Recess. So let's just switch on the modeling plane again. And now we're going to look at giving this a recess, a faux carved scalloped edge around the part. So we're going to take that, we're going to go into the sculpting tools. Okay, so we're going to look at using the smudge tool. The smudge tool enables us to push material out almost as if it was virtual clay. Okay, so we're going to use the smudge option here. Okay, we're going to go the diameter of around 140, strength around somewhere between 60 and 70. And all we're going to do is just simply click and push material out. So you can see we've created uh, quite a little scalloped edge there. And we'll just work our way around. So again, all I'm doing is clicking and pushing and then moving on to the next part, clicking and pushing. Okay, so we'll just do this for the entire shape of this recess. Now if you've found that you may have pushed out too much material or that the strength is too high, then you could just look at just decreasing the strength of your tool. Um, and if you found that you did um, a little bit of damage there, you could look at using the undo brush or you could press Ctrl Z just to undo the last move that you made. Okay, so we just keep pushing like so, and you'll see we're creating a really nice effect here whereby all we're doing is just pushing our pen outwards and it's creating this nice faux carved look until we meet our start point there. Okay, so I like what we've got there, so we'll just go ahead, press keep, and then we can OK that. So now I need a vector that represents this newly created scalloped edge which we can use for our machining boundary. So let's just go ahead and tile our windows. So to create this vector we're going to select the recess component and we're actually going to go into the drawing tab and we're going to look at using the trace bitmap option. Now we normally use the trace bitmap tool when we want to trace an image but for a component grayscale, we can just simply select it and then select the white colour. So that white colour is the lightest colour which is represented by the zero plane. And you'll see that it's going to create a vector that's pretty much going to follow the scallop shape that we just created. Go the default settings here, we could preview that. So you can see we have a vector that represents the scallop shape. We've got a vector that represents the actual boundary of our part. Okay, happy with that? We could go ahead, press apply, close that down. I'm just going to take that outer vector here. I don't need this, so I'm just going to simply use the delete key on the keyboard to delete that vector. So now that we've got our vector that represents that scalloped edge that we can use for our machine boundary, we can now go and switch over to the toolpaths tab to set up our material and run our toolpaths. So let's use this icon here to switch over to the toolpaths. First and most important thing that we need to do here is go into our material setup. So let's use the set option there. So material thickness is three quarters of an inch, XY date and position in the lower left hand corner. Now there's a few factors in here that are important when setting up a digital recess model. Firstly is our Z0 and where we set that to. In this case, it must be on the material surface, as this will allow us to very accurately set where the face of your material is that your dish is going to be machined down into. And that's going to give you the best chance of getting a nice crisp edge around your part. Secondly is the model position in the material. So this is where we set our model to in relation to the actual material thickness. Now in this case we want to make sure we have a gap of zero above the model so that we're going to force the edge of the recess to the surface of our material. Check over the rapid Z gaps, home start position, ensuring that they're safe for your setup and then go ahead and press OK. So let's select that newly created vector. The first toolpath we're going to look at running is a 3D roughing toolpath. So with that vector selected, let's go over to 3D roughing. 
Okay, so tool we're going to look at using is the one I actually have selected here, quarter inch end mill. You could use the edit option just to review the settings that we've got in here for this particular toolpath. Happy with those, so I could go ahead and press OK. Machine limit boundary is the vector, so that selected vector that we just created earlier there. Okay, then we'll go into the roughing strategy. So we're going to do a Z level strategy where we're going to raster in the X axis, followed by a profile that's going to go last. And we'll just call that one 3D roughing, press calculate. Okay, and then we could go ahead and preview that toolpath. So it's just hogging out uh, the material in there. Okay, so that's our first pass there. So then we could go and look at running our finishing pass. So let's just close that down. With that vector selected, let's just go into the 3D finishing toolpath. And here we're going to go with an eighth inch ball nose. I'm going to use the selected vector. Do that in a raster strategy. Call that one 3D finish. Simply press calculate. It's just going to calculate that for us. And then we could just go and preview that toolpath. Okay, so you can see it's starting to come through there. Okay, so it takes a little bit longer, it's a lot more detail using a smaller tool here. Okay, so let's just maximise a 3D view just to take a look at this. And so you may notice here that we actually have a lip going around the edge of this recess shape. Now I know that when we set up our material, we push the model so it's all the way up to the top of the material where we had no gap above the model. So I know it's not caused from anything in our setup. But what this is probably due to is when we actually fitted this vector around the part, we had a limited number of colours that we could fit it to. And so that vector may not go all the way up to the edge of our part here. But this is easy for us to adjust. So if we just use the undo last option, we'll double click to go back into the 3D finish. And we're going to look at applying a very small boundary offset, which will basically just allow the tool just to roll past the vector by an amount that we put in here. So I'm going to put in a very small value of 0 0.05. Then we could calculate that. And then we could just simply go ahead and preview that toolpath. And so you can see straight away that that lip is no longer visible. We have a much more smoother transition between the recess and the actual surface of our material there. Okay, so I like what we've got there. Okay, so we can close that down. We'll just put that in Z. And then it would be a good idea to go ahead and save out the toolpath. So you can go and cut that out on your machine. So that concludes this tutorial. Now there is another tutorial available that shows you how you can create a dished recess. And this can be found in the related video section for this tutorial in the tutorial browser. So let's just go ahead and save this file. So go to File, Save As, and in the Project folder, I'm just going to call this one Recess underscore 3D underscore modeling. Press Save, and you can access that from the Project folder.